Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to beautiful Talakapaki, the heart and soul of this community. This is Snickel Fritz, and I'm Ken Rowe, and this is our fifth live stream episode, can you believe that, from Rowe Gallery here in Talakapaki. This live stream has been made so much fun by the interactions we've had with you guys. Keep in mind, this is live, and it is scary as can be, but take advantage of that by interacting logging on, introducing yourself, and please ask all the questions you want because that's what makes us so much fun. This live stream has been, well, let me back up a little bit. When I mentioned this to a friend of mine about two months ago, a month and a half ago, that we we're gonna do this, the first comment he made is, with a big smile on his face was, oh, you guys are gonna make lemonade out of lemons. With one phone call to Red Rock TV, who I've been dealing with from, for 20 years, this all came to fruition in a matter of a week. So I applaud them, I'm thankful for them, and that's why we are here today. So I'm gonna put little Snickle Fritz to work. Yeah. So um, when this is over and this pandemic is behind us and when it's safe to do so, we're gonna have a party like none other at Row Gallery and you're all invited. And the first toast I'm gonna to make to you is this glass full of lemonade because you made this happen, and we're so thankful for that. So, if you've just tuned in today, you can go to our Facebook icon on our new website, and you can see all the archive shows prior to today. Uh, the first three were dedicated to my sculpting this piece, Simba, from this size, a mo what we call a maquette, to almost six foot long, this size. So we've been tracking the progress every week. But the big concept here with this whole live stream is to feature all of our artists that we're so proud to have. And last week's segue for me was our beautiful Jen Farnsworth, appropriately titled her show, Bright and Beautiful. I think that's what it was, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Bold and Beautiful, thank you. And she is both, and so is her artwork. So I don't wanna take anything away from her time, so let's get back to work on mine. I'll show you the progress I've made. So let me show you. It started with the bones. Ken, we have a couple people I just want to let you know that oh, are joining good. us. We've got uh, Lorna and Warren are with oh, us again. Oh, our friends from Utah, Lorna and yes, Warren, thank just you. Just saying good morning and they're super happy to be here. Thank uh, you. Sylvia Herbert. Yeah. Uh, saying good morning to Ken and Monica and Jen. Thank so you. So a couple folks already weighing in, so good. it's awesome. Oh, we're so thankful for that. So now, as you guys may have already known, we started with a skeleton, all based on a mathematical scale from this piece to this size. I started sculpting the bone, I mean the muscles in. I've worked my way all the way up here. Now, in segment three, I did the face, I roughed it in, and then I started fleshing out the four quarters here. And so, if you looked at last week's segment compared to this one, you would see about 100 more pounds of clay being applied just to this area right here. So this from here back is still what I would call the heart anatomy without the skin and hair. And this is starting to develop the hair. So I want to show you with this panel, this is about how much clay is going over the heart anatomy. So you see what's under there is what I sculpted like I have here. Now I can follow that anatomy as I'm coming up to the surface with the hair. So that's how this segment is. Now, what, one thing I'm asked often is, um, what, are your, what tools do you use? So this is um, a sorbotten sculpting tool. But it was altered and made even better by a grizzly bear. So here's a story. I'm sculpting Brutus the Bear in Montana. He's standing right there. I'm sculpting this piece. And Casey Anderson, his handler, is there. And I said, what do you think Brutus would do if I handed him the end of this stick, of this tool? And it was like a butter knife. He said, I don't know, try it. So I put it out, and he bit it off like a potato chip. And in doing so, I looked at that, and I thought, man, that's a perfect tool for texture. So now I use this tool all the time, <laughs> made by a grizzly bear. And I still use it today. Now, he gave me the idea to make more tools such as this one, which also gives me texture. And you can see how that works. It's kind of awkward from this position, but you can see. 
Okay, so, I got a few more people I just want to let you know that yeah. are coming in that I want to let you know they're, jo they're joining us. Uh, we have Bruce and Pat in Austin. Oh, Bruce, yeah. Pat. Happy to see you and Simba in the progress. Uh, Lisa Aronson coming yeah. in, just saying good morning. She's a regular. Coconut Thank you, Lisa. Creek, Florida. Um, Helen Gillespie, excited to see oh, your progress. Oh, yes, Helen and Butch. Thank you. And they're the reasons this is happening. That's they so awesome. started this whole process. And then uh, Rosemary Farnsworth yes. for Jen <laughs> yeah, and saying good morning. So sorry to interrupt, but I want to let you know those folks are no, coming in. No, please, please ask away. And that's what this is all about. So this piece is getting really heavy now. Randy and I just moved this out. It's probably about 150 pounds. And it's going to get really heavy from here on because, as I said, all I have done is this section. Imagine the rest of this with all that hair and fur back on. I think this is going to be by next week probably at least 250 pounds. So by my calculations today, I have about 340 hours in this and about 150 pounds of clay. Well, let's, let's put it this way, 340 hours and 32 years. That's what I have in this piece. So with that said, I do not want to take away from Jen Farnsworth, Mrs. Bright and Beautiful. So I'm going to have you take over, Jen. And you can't wait. Uh, you're going to be amazed at the progress she's made on this piece. Don Coyote, which started last week here live. Mm -hmm. So she's going to continue with that. And then I'll wrap up the show when she's done. So I'll turn it over to Jen. Great. Thank you, Thank Jen. Thank you, Ken. And good morning, everyone. Thank you again, Ken and Monica. I am so thrilled to be here again. And shout out to my family and friends that are watching this morning. My Aunt Rosemary and my mom and others. Thank you. And I really appreciate it. And as Ken said, I've been working really hard to make some progress for you this morning. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Um, and for those of you who joined us last week, you'll remember that we started, um, I started by answering some of Ken's questions. What is my creative process, my inspirations, and how do I approach my art? And I started with um, a new painting. You'll probably remember this uh, picture, which was that I was using for reference. That's the handsome Don Coyote, who's a permanent resident at the Run and W Wildlife Center just outside of Sedona. And I want to share with you a little bit of my progress during the week this week. So this is pretty close to where we left off. Um, and I started to fill in more of the colors for Dawn. And then a day later, I took it a little further. And then finally, got to where we are today. So here is the progress of where we are today. So uh, what I've done is f filled in a lot of the basic colors. Um, there's still work that I want to do on it, but typically what I'll do is make good progress on a piece like this. Um, and then step away from it for a week or so and just kind of keep looking at it to decide what do I want to do, what's working, what's not working. And at this point, I'm ready to start the background. And there's a couple of different directions I could go with this, and it's amazing. I think of the background being the, the stage for our primary actor here. Now, I could do something that's just a very a soft, muted color there's not a lot of canvas to work with. His face really occupies a lot of the canvas. But I thought I'm going to try something a little different. Sometimes I like to segment it to give it a little bit more interest. And those of you who know my art, here's a, here is a, another Dawn over here, the whole Dawn. I love doing a halo um, around the animals just to kind of highlight them. So I decided I'd do a small halo on this piece. So yesterday I added a little red line. And I think what I'm going to do is just do a partial kind of midnight color here on the side. So I think that that could look really good. Let's get Jen, we here. have Joseph Zani coming in today, making a couple of comments. Just good morning. and <laughs> Good morning, to Joe. You, thanks to you and Ken both and how much that uh, he's enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good morning, Joe. <laughs> So you'll see as I get started on this how much just this midnight is going to really bring him out. Mm 
And I think, now one of the beauties of, of uh, being an oil painter is you can change your mind as often as you want. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to go too far with this. Really just have it be um, something that kind of brings him out. Almost the, mid the midnight and then the daylight. And you'll see how that already begins to have him jump right off the canvas. So we're starting to, starting to get some more character here in the background. And now what I think I'm going to do on this side is um, a medium blue, but I want to be careful because I don't want it to, um, to, to be really quite like the colors that I have going. So we might take a, do a little experimenting here. Let's see how this color might work. A little bit darker blue there. Kim Corey weighing in, Jen, saying great job. <laughs> Good morning, Kim. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. So that's kind of starting to bring him even out even more. And I might do a light little halo. We'll see how this looks around his ear. And I think what I'm going to do at the bottom is probably bring this much darker blue across in the bottom and probably with another red halo um, just to highlight it. Now he is, he is still wet from yesterday, so I'm being careful not to get him too smudged up. And I like with the backgrounds doing, you know, some kind of big, broader strokes. And you can probably already see how just doing this background is already beginning to, to change the, the character of the painting. Let's get a little... Uh, work on that blue down below. And you'll see how that, adding some dark, like he's got the horizon down here. Looking out. Jen, uh, we have Ron Sidaway coming in, just saying this is so fun to watch you create. <laughs> Good morning. 
morning, Ron. Thank you for joining us so early in the morning. Get the lighter here. Let's see if I can get a little closer with that. I think I'm going to do a little. I'm going to separate these two. Line here. Bring in a little bit of that lighter color down here. Coming together. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like the, the light. It's interesting, and I think Ken could probably tell you the same thing with all of his animals. Sometimes you have an idea of what you're going to do, um, but especially when you're dealing with animals, sometimes the art has a mind of its own, and you wind up going in different directions because it... Um, it wants something different. <laughs> so I think that's one of the fun part of, of painting animals that um, have character and a life of their own. And they're going to kind of tell you what they want. And sometimes it's not what you had in mind. <laughs> Jen, we have a question coming in from Bruce Grenner. Oh, good morning, Bruce. He's asking good if morning. Don Quixote started out as a pencil sketch or a paint sketch. A combination of both, Bruce. Thank you. Yes. Um, and he says, magnificent, vibrant colors. Love your art. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Don Coyote. So there, in very quick fashion, I've got sort of the first, first brush of what I might do for a background here. Um, as I said, I might do like a little red horizon line here. I'll adjust the colors as I go um, until it feels right. And I'm going to get a little bit more lightness in there. So in one morning, we've got some background going. His stage is coming together. <laughs> Can, so, so what do you think, Ken? How is this looking? Oh my God, this is amazing, <laughs> Jen. I, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the bird started singing as soon as she started painting this piece. It's amazing. And, and this just brings up a really amazing point that what you're seeing is, of course, live, but it's fine art be, being created before your eyes. It's going to go into incredible homes, who knows where, all over That's the world. That's right, yeah. So this isn't just a reenactment. This is true fine art being created right before your eyes. And that's what we want to bring to you with these live streams. So next week, our artist is somebody you're very familiar with, Kim Corey, one of our sculptors. You have to see because she's going to be debuting a new piece in bronze that in the 30 years I've been in this business, I have never seen a piece that is so brought to life by the patina she chose to do on this piece, done by Eric Peterson, who we're also going to have on the show down the road. She's also going to be working on a life-size Roadrunner, so that'll be in progress as well. So please join us next week. It'll be a blast. And Jen, we thank you <laughs> thank so you, much. Thank you, Ken. Thank, thank you, you all. everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. <laughs>